This is a tutorial on how to customize your palettes over here in order to make things a little more efficient and functional and uh, user friendly for you, especially if you do a certain type of work on MuseScore. I'm a band teacher, so I, I use MuseScore for band stuff really. And um, there's a lot of things that I could get rid of from the, the uh, advanced palettes that saved me a lot of time when it came to getting around. So first thing you're going to do when you want to create your own palette is go down here to where, because you do have these two options to start. There's basic and there's advanced. And if you don't like, really like either one of those, you want to make your own. You're going to click add a new workspace. You're going to name it whatever. For example, if you do a lot of piano composing or, or writing or whatever, um, you could create a palette. Okay, I already made one. Um, you could create a palette specifically for that. So it's going to set you up here with all the, you know, kind of default stuff that it has. And from there, you can go in and get rid of stuff, add stuff, move things around. And um, it's really nice. So first thing is you have to enable editing in each one of these palettes over here that you want to edit. If you don't, if it, you're fine with the way it is, you don't need to edit it. So we're going to click enable editing so that I can go and open it up. And let's say I have never used this for piano and I don't want to see it anymore. I don't want to have it here because I don't really care about having it there. So you can just right click and clear and it goes away. You can also move them around within the palette. So if, let's say I want the quicker or the shorter values for, then to the longer values. And then I'm going to move this around here. And if you drop something on top of another one, it'll just flip flop places with it. So that's pretty easy. If there is something that you're looking for, like I deleted one, let's say I want to add it back in, or there's something that didn't show up here that I want to add in that is some kind of grace note. If there's something that you want to add in here that isn't already there, you're going to go to View Master Palette. Everything, I'm pretty sure all the symbols and everything that you could ever want are in the Master Palette. So here are all the grace notes that are available in MuseScore. And let's say for whatever reason I wanted to drop a clef into the grace notes, I could do that, I suppose. Yeah, it'll let me do it. It'll let you drop anything anywhere. Um, cause you can always get rid of it later. So whatever, if I run out of space and I still want to put more stuff in it, you can just drag and drop it on top and it'll put it in there. And so I'm actually going to go in and clear some of this junk out because I do like to have things organized. You could technically just have one giant palette with everything in it if you really wanted to, which actually might come in handy. So here are all my grace notes. Um, clefs. Okay, now it won't let me, it'll, I'm right clicking, it'll give me the menu, but it won't let me click on anything because I haven't clicked enable editing yet. So now it should let me, and I'll get rid of some of this non-piano stuff out of here. Key signatures, time signatures, let's say, um, I don't need bagpipe embellishments at all. I can get rid of that complete palette. I'm going to right click on it and delete it. Yes, I do not need bagpipe embellishments. I also don't need fretboard diagrams, but if I wanted to change it to something else, let's say I wanted to change it to just like quick access or something, stuff that you use, I don't know, all the time, just a few things. You can also edit, so we'll go ahead and enable editing. You can also edit palette properties. Change the name. Um, you can kind of tell it how big to be or whatever, but you can also edit that once you're in it. And um, I don't really know what show more elements is or any of this stuff, but you could tinker with that. And so from here, it's got all this junk in here. Sorry, it's not junk guitar stuff. Um, you, you've got all this stuff in here. You could clear it out, do whatever you wanted to. 
but you can also insert a brand new palette with nothing in it. Name it whatever you want. And then just drag and drop stuff from the master palette into it. Um, let's see here. One thing that I came up on was that there wasn't a time signature in here that I wanted. And so I went to my master palette to see if the time signature was already in there. And I believe it was 7 8. 7 8 wasn't in there at the time. So I created a 7 8. But if there is a time signature that you want, usually you can find it in, in the time signatures here. And we have to enable editing first, of course. Let's say we want to drag and drop 7 8 into my time signatures. That's all you have to do, drag and drop it. Now let's say I'm looking for something a little obscure, like 7 4 or something. So uh, you can create any time signature you want. So here's 6 8, 5 8, 4 8, 3 8, 2 8, 1 8. I'm going to create 7 4. And there it is. And it'll add it in there. You can drag and drop it if you want. But that's really handy. You don't have to do anything weird that way. But there are all kinds of symbols that I have no idea what they're for, but if you want them, they are there. Tons of symbols. You know, some things only have so many options. So yeah. There are tons of options, tons of ways to customize stuff. If you right click on a palette, you can move it up. You can move it down. I'm not sure what save palette and load palette are, but you know, more options for tinkering. So really great way to save yourself some time.